So anybody remember what we discussed last time? Um, we discussed about um, how many chapters and slokas are in the Bhagavad Gita and what's its first purpose. We also learned about the Okay, what else did we discuss? Um, we learned about the, the that war where Krishna told Arjuna about um, told Arjuna the Bhagavad Gita. Okay. What else? And we learned about one sloka about curd and milk. Oh, yes. They are very good memory. Yeah. So what is about curd and milk? Um, They are both the same. They might be different, but they are having the same purpose. No, uh, they are they are both same, but they are for different purposes. So and the are... gods also are same, but they one of the god is for the three gods for different purposes. Start, uh, middle, and end. Start, middle, and end. Yes, creation, maintenance, and destruction. Destruction. Yeah. So I want to cover something about yoga today. Okay. So is this yoga? Um, no. Actually it is because he's doing that upside down, you know, Shirshasan, which is okay. But is this really yoga is the question. So there are a lot of books, yoga for blood pressure, yoga for physical and mental health, yoga for Katzen, means in German cats. Office yoga, chair yoga. So there are so many different ways in which people talk about yoga. Right? And then there is there are people who talk for yoga for wellness, yoga for back care, yoga secrets for business success, yoga for tennis. That's a strange one. Yoga for weight loss, yoga for pregnancy, desktop yoga, right? All these different tendencies in which, or rather areas in which people talk about yoga. So all these are partially correct, but the real purpose of yoga is something else. So yoga, what is it not? Right? It's not mere physical exercise for good shapely body good health and long life. So when you do yoga, the body will become a little, you know, shapely and strong and all that. But that's not the real purpose of yoga. Hmm? And then the man possesses some mystic powers. That's also a byproduct. Byproduct means when you're producing something, there are other products that come through. Like you will learn this in the chemistry class when you go to high school. So there's always some kind of a byproduct. Byproduct means that there's something that comes. You were not planning for it, but that will come anyways. So all these are byproducts of yoga. But in real purpose of yoga is something very different. Attaining spiritual power? Yes, spiritual is. Who said that? Uh, me. What's your name? Monish. Monish, okay. Because once I start sharing the screen, I will not see your names anymore. Okay, okay. Right? It, I only see the screen. Okay. Okay, so in Bhagavad Gita 646, Krishna says, become greater than yogi, than tapasvi, than jnani or karma. Right? So he, Krishna says, tasmad yogi bhavarjuna means you have to become a Yogi. Yogi, not the physical type, because there are all kinds of yogis, right? So there is a working person, somebody who works in a job for a salary that is called karma, karma, like people are doing karma activity. They will get results, they'll get a salary. That's also yoga. 
when you give the salary in donation away and not use anything for yourself, that's called karma yogi. And when you gain a lot of knowledge by reading scriptures, that is also yoga. That's called jnana yogi. <clears throat> and then somebody who is very austere, he does fasting, he does tapas, he doesn't eat much. That is also yoga. That's called like yoga of austerity. Right? So austerity means you are giving up something. You are not eating or you are not sleeping. Like people sometimes don't sleep for the entire night. That's all. Also one form of yoga. But the yoga that Krishna is recommending is something different. So what is he recommending? Any ideas? Any thoughts? Meditation. Yeah, meditation is also one form of yoga. That is the tapas yoga. But even beyond that, Krishna wants us to do something. It's called bhakti yoga. Means devotion. Bhakti includes meditation. It includes karma. It includes jnana. Right now, we are doing a course, right? We are learning something from Bhagavad Gita. That is called Jnana. So, Bhakti includes Jnana. So, right now, you are not trying to just be a, get a PhD in Bhagavad Gita. Right? Or get a master's degree in Bhagavad Gita. That's not your goal. What, what you are doing this for is to again get Bhakti. So, Karma is in Bhakti. Jnana is also in Bhakti. Austerity is also in bhakti. Work is also there in bhakti. So bhakti is like the superset. Superset means in once you grow up, you will learn something called statistics. In statistics, superset means which includes everything else. Big data set. Yeah, big data set. So basically, normally you only deal with one data, right? No. What do kids under the age of five like? Or what do kids under the between the ages of five and ten like? Or ten and sixteen like? But superset is five to zero to five, five to ten, and ten to sixteen. So that is the superset. So bhakti yoga is like a superset which includes all these other yogas. Okay. So according to Bhagavad Gita, there are four types of yogas. What are the four? Um, bhakti, Jnana, Dhana, Karma. Okay. So which is the highest? Um, bhakti. Bhakti. Why? Because it has all the other yogas in it. Yes. That's a very excellent answer. So last night I went to University of North Texas. You know where that is? No. Oh, no. If you take Highway 380 and go west, it is in a town called Denton. Oh. oh. So we went there and gave this lecture on different types of yoga. That's why I have that UNT in that arrow mark. Because we have something called Bhakti Yoga Club. In okay. University of North Texas. So these are not different paths. So sometimes people will say, oh no, no, you have to do karma very nicely. Sometimes people will say, oh... You have to read a lot of books, get a lot of jnana, dhyana, which is a part of Ashtanga Yoga. Or you have to do meditation, like just like Monish was saying. So these are not different paths. They'll say, oh, my path is different than yours. They'll come and argue with you. The other day, some Muslim guy was coming and arguing with us. We were distributing books in front of Swadeshi. And this Muslim guy was saying, yeah, yeah, Islam, we, 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 have, we can do everything in Islam like that. He's arguing. Why? Why do you want to argue? They are all steps on the same ladder. Ultimately, if you are smart enough, you will figure out that you have to come to bhakti. Devotion to the Lord. So there is no point in arguing. Karma is good. And one time, one person who practices Raja Yoga, he was coming and arguing. Yeah, Raja Yoga is superior. Yeah, it is also one step in this ladder. So Raja Yoga comes under Jnana Yoga. 
uh, it's like a, every yoga for attaining energy, quality energy, or some which which has different uses. Yoga for positive energy is basically that dhyana or ashtanga yoga, but we need to go beyond that to go to bhakti. Ultimately, we have been created by Krishna, God, and yeah. we are all parts and parcels of Him. Means we are like small anus, small microscope particles, and He is who means He is like the superset. He is superset of all the eight billion people on the planet. The world's population is 8 billion, right? Human beings. But there are trillions, means 1,000 billion is 1 trillion. Trillions of bacteria, birds, animals, right? Yeah. So all of these have been created by the Supreme Lord. And we are all parts and parcels of that Supreme Lord. So we are all small parts. Just like in a car, there are 20,000 parts. Even if one part is missing, the car will stop functioning. Right. Sometimes there is a chip in the car computer. One little chip, some water falls on it and stops working. The entire car is useless. It's just a piece of metal. But once you put that small chip back in, the chip may only cost $20, but the $30,000 car will start working. Right? In the yeah. same way, we are all parts of Krishna, God. So everybody is needed for working of the universe. So you cannot say somebody is good, somebody is evil. Yeah, the evil people are also important because they are also parts and parcels of God. Yes, there's, they just chose to become evil, become bad like that. So there are, everybody is a child of Krishna. Everybody is a part of Krishna or God. But some people choose to follow him and some people choose to rebel. Rebel means they'll fight with God. No, 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 this is not going to happen like this. So people who cooperate with God are called Devatas and people who fight with God are called Rakshasas or Dhanavas. Right? So it's better to be a Devata than be a Dhanava or Rakshasa. So we, we have a choice that is called free will. Free will means you have freedom to choose. You want to go to the left or you want to go to the right. So one side is God-friendly attitude. The other side is attitude against God. But both of us are like God, evil and positive. No, no, both of them are parts of God. They are not, a part can never become a God. Like the $20 computer chip, can it ever become God? No. No, same thing. We can never become God. We can become godly. Means we can cooperate with God and get godly qualities. We actually have something like 67% of God's qualities in each one of us. We have to now work on the balance. Okay. Yeah. So all of us, I mean, in general, people are good, but they all have these negative tendencies. They want to fight with the Supreme Lord. They say, oh, why is it like this? I will not follow. Somebody says, oh, today's Janmashtami, Krishna Janmashtami, you should fast. Don't eat anything. Then the the Dhanavas or demons, they'll say, oh, why should I fast? I won't fast. I'll eat more today. Without eating, it's, it's a problem for our body. Like, Why does God like uh, that we are struggling? Sorry, so the question again? Uh, why will God like if we struggle? We are struggling because we are rebelling against God. Actually, we are not supposed to struggle. Uh, like without eating or without sleeping, it's a struggle for our body. No, it is not a struggle for your body. It is called austerity. Fasting is an austerity. Austerity in Telugu, I'm trying to think what is the right word. Mm. Anyway, I cannot get the Telugu word, but austerity means you are voluntarily giving up eating and sleeping to please the Lord. To remember him. Uh -huh. right? Because every day, 365 days, we are only cooking and eating. When do you have time for God? Right? So on the key days, like Krishna Janmashtami, Rama Naomi, hmm? there are many, yeah. many like Ekadasi, every 15 days, you, you are not supposed to eat uh, uh, you know, rice and wheat. 
you can eat as many fruits and vegetables and potatoes. So on Ekadasi, what happens is the Papa Purusha hides in rice and wheat. So that's why we eat wheat actually more on that day. But what do we eat? Wheat, fruit, oh. vegetables, quinoa, peanuts, almonds. So actually there is nutritional value on the fasting days higher actually. Um, because on in rice and wheat we get too much fat inside it. No, no, not in... that. Not because of that. The spiritual reason is, Papa Purusha means the person of sin hides in ekadasi, in the uh, in the grains. Oh. So once upon a time, Papa Purusha went to Lord Vishnu and he said, "See, everybody is good." And back then, everybody was good, right? There was no papam. <laughs> everybody is good. What do I do? Where do I go and influence these people? He says, okay, on Ekadasi, you can hide in rice and grains, basically. Rice, wheat, jawar, there are various kinds of grains. So on that day, we, fa we don't eat that. We eat other things. Why? Because that is how it is written in the Shastra. Shastra means scriptures in the holy books, right? Like the Muslims say, oh, we fast for 30 days. But if you count all the fasting days in the Vedic tradition, it's maybe like 60 days. Like 30 days of Ekadasis, once every 15 days. Right? Ekadasi. Dasami Taravata, Ocha first day, Ekadasi. Under. That day, you are not supposed to eat rice and grains. Other grains like wheat and jawar and things like that. Why? Because Shastra says so. See, you don't control the universe. You didn't invent the universe. You are just a small part. Just like the computer chip is telling the car, Honda Accord. Hey, I am the car. You listen to me. The car will say, shut up. You cooperate with me or get out. Right? So part is always supposed to cooperate with the whole. So it is an advanced topic, but I'm just giving it to you as an example. Right? Why we fast, why we do austerity. It is not to struggle. We are voluntarily struggling to please God. Because on those days, there are some things. And also, if you look at from the... Uh, astronomical perspective on Ekadasis, the sun, moon, earth alignment is different. So your digestive system is bad. Your bodily structure is weak on those days. That's the reason why we don't eat on the like, Surya Grahas and Chandra Grahas. Yes, yeah, Surya Graha, Chandra Graha, and the, some, some Amavasyas you don't eat. Like sometimes people, right, they make fun of the Vedic people. Oh, you're always fasting of some kind. Why? We can do whatever. But okay, now people have started doing whatever. Are they any more happy than before? No. No, it is the same thing. <laughs> so better to follow the rules than break the rules. Right? You may say, oh, why is it 40 speed limit? I'll go on 60. Police will catch you someday. If not one day, someday they'll catch you. Better to follow the rules so that you'll never get caught and never have the anxiety or stress that you're going above the speed limit. Okay. Right? So it is like that. It is, we are doing it, it's voluntary. Nobody's forcing you to do it. It's called free will. So as to please God. Right? So when, when you do these things, body is, you know, the, the soul, antakarana, the consciousness is getting Purified. Shuddha is becoming Shuddha. Shuddha means pure. Because you have seen, right? Like sometimes people, they just eat anything, any animal that comes in their way. They drink alcohol. They smoke. They are abusing their body. But they pay the price. When they are young, nothing will happen. But once they cross 50, all kinds of problems. Diabetes, uh, blood pressure, heart attack, colon cancer. Right? You see that actually. I mean, when you are young, you think you are invincible. Invincible means like you are like a superman. Nothing will happen to you. Yeah, because body is still young. <laughs> but later what happens? All these problems will start coming. So because the follow the rules and then minimize problems. The problems when we are doing young will like uh, get lost. In the long term, it will affect us very much. Yes. Because we have a stronger immune system and Krish and like um, Krishna said something like when we were younger, he will forgive us, but once we grow up, he will not forgive us. Yeah, we'll get to all that. Yeah, but basically, yes. Um, 
like during uh, COVID, people were saying, eat more broccoli, eat more green leafy vegetables like, you know, spinach, palakura or totakura. Like these are Americans who are saying that, right? Like people who have no background in these vegetables, they're saying, yeah, to build your immune system, you have to eat all these things. But traditionally, in my family, we have been eating all these things since childhood anyways. Right? So, when, 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 when there is a trouble, people want to follow rules and scriptures. When there is no trouble, they think they are like Superman. I can do anything. But we have to, we have to see. That's why we have to follow scriptures like Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. All these books are there for a reason. Hmm? Actually, to be a perfect yogi, you cannot eat non-vegetarian. If you eat non-vegetarian, what happens? Those toxins will accumulate in the intestines. And uh, when you do these various asanas and pranayama, your intestines won't cooperate with that asana. Right. So actually, for a, for a good yogi, no non-vegetarian. That's, that's very clear. And also for all the young boys, it's called brahmacharya. Till they come to what 20, 21 years and they get married, they should like stay away from the girls and girls should stay away from the boys. Only after 21, 22, when you get married, till 50, 55, then you live in Grihastha. Grihastha means as wife and husband. After that, again, wife and husband like separate from each other. It means not separate, means like divorce. There is no concept of divorce in Vedic culture. Separate means like they're living in the same house, but they are not really sleeping on the same bed or anything like that. You know, they, they're like little detached from each other. Like they are fighting too much and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So all these rules are there for a reason. Otherwise, you know, if um, people break these rules, it is bad for them. But both from a body perspective as well as from a spiritual perspective. And then in the end, you will not get moksha. Again, you have to take a birth. Again, you have to, right now, this life you are in Prosper, next life you will be in Frisco. Following life you will be in McKinney. In this way, you are taking birth again and again and again. So, this is the process given. They, all these, you know, sages are much smarter than us, like Vyasa, Narada Muni, Vyasa Muni. All these people have documented this knowledge in these books. Right? And you see the yogi on the left side, right? He doesn't eat anything. He just sits and meditates. And when he dies, you know what happens? From the kapala, the soul gets out and it goes to the higher planets like that. So all this is a science. In, in chapter 8 of Bhagavad Gita, how to die is given. Normally everybody is talking about art of living. But Bhagavad Gita chapter 8 is art of dying. How to die properly so that you can get mukti, moksham. So, like biology, physical, physics, chemistry, these subjects are just to help you work in an office, right? In a factory. Just so that you can make nice cars, nice aeroplanes, right? All these engineering subjects are to make more good products. But they are forgetting the primary product. What is the primary product? The primary thing is the soul, right? The Atma. They are not teaching you anything about Atma. That is where people like me are teaching this subject so that people can know Are there is something beyond all these other subjects taught in universities, in schools and colleges. Yeah, so again, this is a very big topic. We can spend the like 10 hours talking about the same topic, but we'll keep moving on. Right? So there is something called yoga ladder. Has anybody heard of this yoga ladder? No. Yeah, if you don't come to these classes, you will never hear of this because it's never taught in schools or colleges. They'll teach you something else. They'll teach you how to make a drone, how to create a robot. But the main thing they forgot, which is hey, how to take care of your soul. Right? So, when we are born, we are no better than animals. We have no concept of good and bad. There is no concept of what I should do in life. Right? And then we do karma kanda. Karma kanda means we do first karma, action. Every action has a reaction. What is that law called in physics? 
action reaction yeah what is that law called um newton's third law yeah um, newton's third law of motion right i mean all newton's laws for that matter but third law of motion like right? your body continues to be in motion until obstructed by something else and then when it gets obstructed then there is a reaction right so karma means we do activity right we go to office we go to school you go to football field all these are actions and they have reactions have to... suppose if have... i slap somebody right if i slap somebody what is likely to happen they will slap you or shout you yeah he may slap me or even do worse things <laughs> he may take a gun and shoot me <laughs> right so that is called a reaction so every action has a reaction that's why we have to be very careful in the karma kanda area of life all the pujas that we do like ganesh puja durga puja these are all karma kanda just to minimize the reactions you'll just say oh dear durga you know i slapped that fellow please pardon me please save me so that he doesn't pull a gun and come back to me next year so that's what we do right we do so many mistakes and then we pray to durga mata or somebody like that and then next step is karma yoga karma yoga means whatever action you do the reactions you surrender to the lord which means suppose you make money in the office you give part of that to back to propagating of dharma like building temples or something like that then you come into karma yoga then comes gyana yoga like learning the scriptures like bhagavad gita various upanishads various vedas how many vedas are there um four four yeah what are their names rigveda uh, samaveda Ch uh, chaturveda what the last one it's not chaturveda chaturveda means four vedas it's samaveda yajurveda rigveda and atharva veda hmm so what is the purpose of vedas to walk us to god to let us understand what god is and how can we reach god okay what else what else how can we get a proper mukti okay what else you are missing something more basic mm. help us to walk to god yes even more basic than that um what god wants us to know to get to him yes and even more basic even more how to live in this world right how to live in this world for example in rigveda how to play the mridanga how to compose various swaras right musical swaras all that comes from rigveda right i mean you are all talking about yes how to go to god how to walk to god how to attain mukti all that is good but even prior to that first you should know how to live in this world right what time should you wake up how to brush your teeth why do you need to take a bath actually we are supposed to take bath twice a day you know that and sanyasis are supposed to take bath three times a day where do you get this knowledge from the vedas how to play musical instrument rigveda has how to play a sitar how to play various you know swaras ragas there is ragams that right ragam talam pallavi where do you get all this knowledge from from the vedas and then vedas gives all this knowledge and then he says all this is for attaining mukti that's how it concludes right like for example you are learning what subjects are you learning at school tell me math science um english okay so what do you do so, with math and science i will learn how to do calculations on money and how to calculate the correct radius for building things right 
So, improve of your mathematics life? is used in civil engineering to build buildings, in mechanical engineering to build cars or refrigerators, in computer engineering for building computer chips. Because if you don't know this basic math, how will you know those advanced concepts? Right? In the same way, the Vedas teach you basics. And then they go into advanced concepts. Oh, the purpose of all that you have learned, right? Why to when to wake up, what to cook, what not to eat, what to eat, how to treat your elders, parents. Purpose of all this is ultimately to go back to your eternal father, your father in the spiritual world. How to go back to him. Then it will conclude with all of these things. So you cannot directly say, yeah, I'm trying for Mukti without knowing the basics. Right? If you go today, like to there's a Toyota Corporation in Plano, Texas, right? Plano or Fisco, there's a factory, Toyota. And you say, Moni says, Oh, sir, I want to build a new car. And then what will the person ask? Question. Um, what size? Do you know what? what? Do you know what is about the physics size about car? car and what the brand do you want? Yeah. So then he'll say, sorry, sir, you don't have this basic knowledge. Go to Frisco High School and learn all these things and come back. Right? Yeah. So same thing. Unless we know how to live in this world and unless we do a little bit of jnana, right? We need to know what is the process of knowledge, what is the goal of knowledge, you cannot really go into advanced topics, right? So we started like being an animal. From there, we do karma. Then we surrender or give up some of the benefits that we get. Like when you work, you get a salary. When you play a game, you get an award or a medal. All that. You should say, Krishna, this medal is for you. It's not for me. Right? That is karma yoga. Then jnana is knowledge. Then comes Ashtanga Yoga, like asanas, physical exercises, pranayama, breathing exercises, yama, niyama. Yama means do's, niyamas means don'ts. Then pratyahara, we'll come to all that. Okay? Then comes Brahman realization or Paramatma realization. Paramatma means super soul. So God is hiding in your body. You know where he is hiding? In, uh, in the heart. In the heart, yeah. Right? That's why Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Man Mana Bhava Mat Bhakto. So you become your my bhakta in your heart. Man. Actually, when we say man, people immediately show their head, right? Your, your brain is in your head, but your man or mind is actually in your heart. Then comes beyond Paramatma realization, understanding God in the heart is God as a person. That is Bhakti Yoga. When God is a person, God is a person like you and me, is much bigger than you and me, more powerful, more smarter. So, when you see somebody more powerful, more smarter, what do you do? You fight with him or you cooperate with him? We will cooperate. We will cooperate. That is called Bhakti Yoga. So, you wake up early in the morning, you sing songs for him, Mangal Arati, then you don't eat what he doesn't eat. Krishna says, Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam. He only eats from the vegetable kingdom. He doesn't eat from the non-vegetable kingdom. So if you if you like to be his friend, then you have to follow what he follows. He only eats from the vegetable kingdom. So you only cook and give like in only vegetable kingdom, right? Like in temples, why they only offer to God payasam, uh, daddojanam, perganam, like that. Why don't they offer KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken and McDonald's? As, as God only eats the vegetables. Yeah. And he doesn't God. want to hurt animals and other living beings on this right, world. Right. Therefore, we only offer to him what he likes. And if you want to cooperate with him, you only eat what he likes. Right? So you only eat prashadam. So that is why we cook for him. That is called naivedyam. And offer to him nice things, right? Rasgulla, gulab jamun, payasam, you know, pulihora, you know, lemon rice. And then you eat what he eats. So the, all that becomes prashadam. 
So you eat only what he eats. You wake up in the morning and sing songs for him. That is called Mangalarti means you are waking up. Like Suprabhatam, Venkateswara Suprabhatam. So you are basically waking the Lord up at 4.30 in the morning. That's called Suprabhat. Su means good, Prabhat means morning. It's like saying good morning. You are telling God good morning every day. Right? And he's pleased. He says, oh, Monish is a good boy. These other boys are also good. Somebody put some questions in the chat or something. Your cousin Sanvi is trying to join. Okay. So how do I let them in? There is no message for me saying uh, add them. So um, I think you should go to the participants in the Zoom area. Yeah, I'm in the participants, but it doesn't say somebody is waiting in the lobby. Normally it says, but right now Sanvi is not in the lobby. Okay, ask her to join again, Deeru, and maybe maybe we'll be able to get to her. Okay, so this is what it is. Bhakti yoga means doing what God likes, not what I like. I mean, I'll still do what I like as long as God also likes it, right? If God likes it, then then there is full cooperation between the living entities or human beings and the Supreme Lord. That will lead to Bhagavan realization. So, first we start self-realization in the Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga, Ashtanga Yoga. This section is called self-realization, okay? In the middle section. And in the top section, you do Paramatma realization, you do serve the Lord as a person, and then that leads to Bhagavan realization. You're understanding God as a person. Right? So, once there was this... Um, uh, the, 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 the king asked, tell me what you want, right? He asked three people. One person said, uh, there are no roads in my village. Can you put roads? He'll say, granted. The other person says, there are no wells. Um, so can you put that? And, you know, um, the people in my village are very poor. So everybody should get 10 gold coins. The king said, okay, granted. Then he went to the third person. I asked, what do you want? He said, I don't want anything, uh, dear king. I just want your friendship. Right? So out of these three people, who is the smartest person? Three. The, the third one. Why? Because, because if, if uh, the God is the, the, the king is the friend of him, then he can do like, not, he, he don't want to do anything, but like he has a support from God. Yes, it's support from the king, right? Because right now you asked for roads and you asked for gold coins, you got them. But in future, you want something else. Where will you go? The third person is very smart because he's, he's, he's uh, you know, by having God as his, or rather the king as his friend, he can go to him any number of times. And plus, um, um, in the past, uh, in kingdoms only the kings were allowed to like go and see god whereas all the poor people were not allowed to see so maybe because of making friends with the king he could also go see god yeah so there are so many different ways in which having king as a friend so the same thing applies to understanding god also right so you understanding Krishna. So if you are friendly with Krishna and follow his rules and yes. So that's when like Sanvi keeps uh, muting and unmuting some for some reason. Yeah. Uh, so for that reason, when you are friendly with the Supreme Person or Krishna, then you will get more benefits. So a smart way is to just be friendly with the Lord, right? Follow, be cooperate with him. And then sometimes you don't even know what danger is waiting for you. For example, you are driving on Coit Road, right? Between Plano and Frisco. So you don't even know an accident is waiting for you because some big truck is coming on the crossroad. But because Krishna or God is your friend, he will divert the traffic or create a traffic jam so that you are not going in front of the truck to be crushed. 
right? So not only the things that you want, but things that can also save you. Things, some things you, sometimes you don't even know what danger is waiting for you, right? By taking shelter of him, you will also solve problems that are about to happen. Once I was driving in Miami and I was about to get into an accident. I don't know what happened. Suddenly the car accelerated and I escaped the accident. Did I do it? No, I didn't do it. But then who did it? So by taking shelter of Bhagavan, if there's a problem about to happen, that will also be avoided. Right? So we start out as animal. We go to karma, like various activity, actions. When you do actions, you get reactions. From there, you go to karma yoga, where you get, you do some activity, you get some benefit. You give that benefit back to dharma, which means like building temples or whatever, you know, good activities you want to conduct. Then you acquire knowledge, jnana. Then you perform asanas, pranayama, control the physical body so that you can meditate well. Then you will either get Paramatma realization or Brahman realization. Brahman realization means God is everywhere. That concept you will understand. Today you may say it just like an English language sentence, but you will actually understand what it means. That is called Brahman realization. Or Paramatma realization is you find the God in your heart. And then once you get to Paramatma realization, you serve God by, as I said, singing, chanting his names. We'll chant now. And then that will lead to Bhagavan realization. That is called the yoga ladder. Any questions? Uh, does God don't like who eats like non-witch? Well, he doesn't eat. So why should we eat? Simple, right? Um, does God have like any favorite people or is everyone equal to his mind of view? Ah, very good question. Krishna says, Sama Sarveshu Bhuteshu. He is equal to everyone. But he also says, I like my devotees, my bhaktas. So he likes everybody, but he has special treatment for bhaktas. So suppose if there are 10,000 people in trouble and two of the people are chanting his name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, like that. So he is more likely to favor those two people and the 9,998 people are next in line, but they are not in top in the list. Just like, right? You have, how many people are there in your class? Um, uh, 20 to 30. Okay, so let's say there are 25 people in the class. And then you always sit next to one person in the classroom and you are very friendly with him. Right? Suddenly terrorists come into the school and they start firing, bam, 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 with a gun. So who are you likely to hold the hand and escape from the classroom? My friend. Your friend, friend, right? You'll say, hurry, come on, Manish, now hold my hand, let's escape. There's a window, let's jump out of the window. Yeah, I mean, everybody in the class is, you know, is nice to you. You like all of them. But who are you going to escape? You are going to escape with your close friend. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Same thing with God. God is a person. He has feelings, emotions. So if you are always in his good books, you are cooperating with him. You are first in his list. It's not like other people are, you know, he will ignore them. But... First, he will take care of you and then he will take care of others. He's a person. He's, he has the same feelings like, like you know, how, how do you know God is a person? If you have feelings, he has a feelings. If you have emotion, he has emotions. Say, you may like Rasgulla more than Gulab Jamun. You like both. In the same way, he has some preferences too. Right? Some people say, oh, God is just like a stone. He doesn't eat anything. Like, no, it's not like that. How would you feel if somebody says, hey, Monish, um, you know, you don't have feelings. I don't need to feed you. Or, you know, if four of us are going to a football game, I will not include you. 
because you are just like, you know, a rock. <laughs> How would you feel? Not good. Yeah, same thing, right? So God has feelings. We have yeah. we have to address his feelings. So they're different. Uh, if if God also is a human, then what is the factor that differs the humans and the God? God is not a human. He comes in a human-like form. When he comes, avatar. Ava means descend, coming down. Taran means wandering around. So when Krishna wants to come down, he comes down and then he wanders amongst us, which he did 5,050 years ago in Kurukshetra in central India, near Delhi. And then he, when he was young, he was in Vrindavan. He was born in Mathura. When he was young, he was in Vrindavan. Then when he was a king, he went to Dwarka. And when he guided Arjuna, you see that faint little picture in the background. This is Krishna on the left and Arjuna. Arjuna is looking to Krishna for guidance. Yeah. So he was in Kurukshetra. Right? So essentially when he comes down, Ava, Ava means coming down. Taran means wandering. Ava Taran means coming down and wandering. That's what it means. So Krishna came down 5,000 years ago. He came down and he wanted amongst us. And he gave us the rule book called the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is nothing but a rule book. And it gives you a lot of guidance. It's got psychology in it. Chapters 2, verse 66 and 67, they talk psychology. Right? It's got philosophy. It's got everything that you want. Who wrote Bhagavad Gita? Bhagavad Gita was dictated by Lord Krishna and Vyasadeva was documenting it. Uh, like Ganesh documented it? Ganesh yeah, so, so, so basically Vyasadeva is watching the, just like uh, who is watching? Sanjaya is watching to Drivya Drishti what is happening in Kurukshetra, although he was in Hastinapura, Delhi, right? Which is like what, 80 kilometers? He was still watching it remotely, just like we watch television. And yeah. he was telling to Dhritarashtra. Same way, Vyasa is seeing all this with remote control. Vyasa Dev is there in Himalayas, sitting in Vyasa Gufa, Vyasa Cave. And yeah. Ganesha is sitting in Ganesh Gufa or Ganesha Cave. Even now you can see that in Himalayas. And Vyasa is seeing this live and is giving live commentary. And Ganesha is documenting and writing it down. Okay. Um, I have one question. So, like you said before, um, God is not human. Only when he he becomes human during his avatars. But then, why do some people say you should see God in every person because God is in everyone? Yeah, because God is in Paramatma form, right? There is Jivatma means you. You are the Jiva, and he is Paramatma, Super Soul. You are the Soul. He is Super Soul. He is sitting there in the heart. We are the molecules of the God. So, there is the Supreme Lord Krishna in his own home. His home is called Goloka Vrindavan. It's a separate planet up there. Okay? Once in a while, he comes down. He came 5,050 years ago. Okay? But at the same time, it is called distribution. He distributed himself as Paramatma in every heart. All 8 billion people have Paramatma in the heart. And Paramatma is also there in the heart of every dog, every monkey, every cow. So not only human beings, you have to see the presence of God in every living entity. Um, in this uh, diagram you're showing us, um, what is the meaning of this immoralists and mortalists? Immoralist. Immoralist means they don't follow any moral laws. They are lawbreakers, right? And then moralists with quotations. They think they are moral, but they break some laws now and then. They'll say, oh, you know, I'm a good boy. I don't drink in office. I don't drink in school. I come home at night, 10 o'clock. I drink on my bed and go to sleep. Right? So they are moral for like 90% of the time, and but 10% of the time they break rules. Get the point? Yes. Yeah. So most of us are actually in that category, right? Most of the time we are good, but every now and then we break some rules. But we should be in the left category. Karmis, 
where we do activity, sakama. Kama means desire. Sakama means full of desires. And then nishkama means you are working, but you don't have any kama. No desires. So you're working for welfare, for example. Right? So you, you, you may say, I will volunteer for Boy Scouts of America. You're not getting any salary, but you're just working. But still you are a karmi because you are working, right? Then comes jnani where they they do a little bit of karma, but they focus more on knowledge. Then comes dhyanis who are meditators like Gautam Buddha, you know, and his followers. There's so many people who are meditators. Then comes bhaktas. Bhaktas are the most important people because they do all these three things anyways. Plus, they cooperate with Lord. That's why we these people are called law abider. Abider means you follow the law of God like that. Okay, so we'll stop there and we will uh, chant now. Okay, let's chant the Hare Krishna mantra together 108 times. So, Hare Krishna mantra. Um, sir, can you like send us the um, Telugu version of this? Send us what? Send you what? On um, the Telugu version of this uh, mantra. Telugu version? Yeah, it is yeah. there on the internet somewhere. Yeah, Google. Okay. Telugu. Hmm, Okay, Andar Chapandi. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Rama Rama Hare Hare. Sorry, my note and Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare.